Thanks for joining me and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Hi guys, it's your girl Jalinda and I'm back again today with another video. Today I'm going to be um, cleaning my oven and stove top. Um, I started on it last night. I started um, with the stove top, the drip pans and I was telling you guys that I need to maybe replace the coils, the heat coils um, on the stove as well as the drip pans. Now I was going to try and clean the drip pans first to see if I could get them clean enough to my liking um, before I bought more because I've seen them both on Amazon and they're not very expensive. Um, I want to get a better quality than the last time I bought drip pans because I feel like it's not you know a strong enough material I think that you know they come in a lot of different um, price ranges and I think that if I spent a little more then they probably would last a little more a little longer and probably wouldn't get as dirty and as um, burnt as some of the ones that I've bought in the past I've bought them twice for this stove since I've lived here and um, I just I don't know. I, th I just think I'm not getting a good quali good enough quality um, drip pan. So if I can't clean these to my liking, which I'm probably, from what I can see, it's they're probably not going to come really clean. They're not going to come real clean, um, spotless, you know. So I'm going to probably have to buy more. So I'm going to have to get on the Amazon and go ahead and order those as well as the heat coils. Um, the heat coils cost probably about 40 bucks. Um, not bad, but I just didn't want to have to do that in this house because, you know, guys, I'm, uh, thinking about moving. I'm, I mean, I don't know how soon or anything, but I just hate to put anything into this house that they, the people that own the house won't put into it. I mean, cause I've, I've told it, told them this many times. There's one of my eyes on my stove that doesn't work at all. So, and then there's another one that has what appears to be a shortage because sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. So, and I've expressed this to them and they were supposed to replace my heating coils. They didn't. So if I do, I want to be re reimbursed for that because I don't want to put anything to, into a, a house that I'm renting, you know, and I don't own this home. So I'm not going to invest in repairs that I shouldn't be responsible for. The stove was a bit, um, I don't know, it was just really used. Um, I, I, I imagine it's probably been in this house um, since the houses were built. And these houses were built, I think, I wanna think it was 2008 they were built. So, um, 2007, 2008, but I don't think that this stove has been replaced since then. They have replaced, they did replace my microwave. Um, it went out like probably when I first moved, the first year that I moved here, it went out and they replaced it. Um, the, the dryer, clothes dryer has been replaced, you know, so I think that because the houses have been here so long, that things are just needing to be replaced every so often. And that's not something they are really fond of doing. So, um, I don't know. I just, I don't think that I should be responsible for heating coils on a stove that doesn't belong, doesn't, you know, that I don't own. But, I mean, you know, I'll do it and I'll just keep my receipt and I'll want to be reimbursed whenever I move. Um, so, I mean, you know. However you guys want to, I mean, you know, however they want to do it, it's going to get done because um, I told them right around mm, October, you know, I told them, look, I'm going to be having um, dinner here for Thanksgiving here at my, at my house. And I really would like to have those heating coils replaced before Thanksgiving because, and nothing. So I went and I tried to do the best I could and I just bought drip pans thinking that that would help it look a little more cleaner and a little more, you know, not so burnt and, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, anyways, so 
I'm just gonna go on, I'm, I, I've cleaned them as much as I can and I'm gonna show you guys how they turned out and I'm gonna go try and clean the oven as, as best I can because it was a mess when I moved in too. It was clean, you could tell somebody cleaned it, but it had a lot of um, areas that couldn't be clean, you know, that were just burnt on and, there, and there's no way that it's gonna come off. Um, the oven works fine, so I just, I clean it as best I can and I go ahead and use it, but when the heating coils on the top of the stove are not working, I need somebody to either either replace them or I mean you know replace my stove something you know I, I just I just can't imagine why a person wouldn't do that I mean you know if you want to keep collecting rent you want to keep you want to do what your tenant needs done you know so anyways I'm, I'm, I'm enough about that but let me just show you how they turned out now there was one that I'm gonna turn you guys around. There was one, this small one, that really did come clean. I mean, it's it's pretty clean, you know, and it's there's nothing burnt on. I, I was able to get it all off. Now, this bigger one, it's ruined. It's just like I say, and this is one of the ones that I bought last, and I think I bought them right around, well, right around like the first part of November, because I was getting ready getting the house ready for Thanksgiving. And so, and I've cleaned them probably twice since I bought them. And this is what we have here. You know, I don't know if you can see that, let me show you. It's just caked on, burned on, almost, you know, for me scrubbing on it, it's kind of trying to want to be rusted. You know, I just, I can't deal with that, you know. So, and then these are, I have them um, setting the second time around it with, the um, the cleaning the steel wool cleaning pad um, I, I scrubbed them with that and with the abrasive cleaner and I was gonna let them set a little while longer and just see but I just don't think um, matter of fact I know they're not gonna come clean they're not this is all of this is not gonna come off um, I need to re I'm gonna have to replace them I'm gonna have to replace those and I'm gonna have to replace these heating coils because it's just man, it's awful dark in here today it they're just not gonna work that that just looks hideous I mean I don't uh, I'm pretty picky when it comes to my kitchen I don't, I don't like things that look gross that look you know like they've had it there's, there's no reason for that there's I mean no reason for that so I'm gonna try again with reporting this to them and see if they'll do anything um i've said it to them more than once i told them about the heating coils it's like they're just old they should have been replaced before i got here because they were old when i came and now they are just hideous you know it's just uh, i don't like it i don't like how that looks so i'm gonna um, contact them again and let them know that I'm not, you know, I'll buy drip pans, but I just don't feel like I should have to buy heating coils. I mean, they don't cost much, but it's not my responsibility. This is not my house. This is not my stove. I'm renting these things and it needs to be workable, you know, up to standard anyway. But anyways, I was wanting to clean the oven and it's um, kind of the same way. It's just not in good shape. Okay, when I'm starting to, uh, when I want to clean my stove and oven, I first start with my uh, drip trays, or my drip um, pans, that the pans that are under the eyes on your stove. Um, what I did is I took the eyes out, and I really, really need to replace these. Um, they have had it. I mean, it's just, they're old, you know, and I, um, they just need to be replaced. Uh, the stove was here when I, when I, when I got, when I, moved into the house and they were worn then so they're really they've really had it and they really need to be replaced um i found them I'm, i've looked at some of them on amazon and they they run about 40 bucks for a set um not too expensive so i may just go ahead and um order some of those so that i can replace them um i wanted to replace my my drip pans 
but at the same time, uh, I wanted to try to clean them first and see if I could get them clean. Now, I've cleaned these a couple of times since I bought them, and they came uh, pretty clean the last time that I that I cleaned them. Um, and so what I'm using is a piece of a, a steel wool soap pad, and I use a little bit of like a, I guess an abrasive uh, cleaner to to try and uh, scratch it, you know, st scratch some of the stuff that has built up on the trays out. I mean, you know, try to scratch it off. Uh, and like I said, last time I cleaned them, they got pretty clean, but I just feel like these are the, one, the ones that I bought, these are just not a good quality um, drip pan. And I just bought them because I saw them and they they had maybe two to choose from. I think they had this one and a black pair. And I really wish now that I had gotten the black because at least the dirt doesn't, or the grime doesn't show up on them as as quick. So there's another, um, there's several brands of these. And there's some that are, uh, my stove is a Kenmore. And they have ones that are universal, you know, that can fit uh, most stove tops. So, um, but there are some that are better quality than others and they just, the, the price difference is, is, um, not outrageous. So, um, if this, if these don't come clean this time, I'll just go out and buy some more or either just go ahead and order more of them on Amazon. I've seen them on Amazon as well. And they're pretty inexpensive for a set. But like I said, you if you want to get the ones that are a little more expensive, you'll probably uh, find that they will last you longer and also will, that's with anything else, that's just kind of how that goes. The more money you spend on things, a lot of times um, you'll get a better quality of whatever that item is. And um, it will last you longer and you wouldn't have to clean them as often because it would be a better grade of um, chrome um, and it won't get, I mean, you know, this chrome feels to me is like it's porous and it picks up everything. I mean, it just picks up all the grime and dirt and anything that boils over, it just burns right to it, you know. So that's how I start um, getting ready to clean my stove and oven. Um, I will show you guys um, how I clean the top of the stove and also I'm going to clean the inside of the oven. Uh, I hadn't cleaned it out, the inside of the oven out and since Thanksgiving. So it's long overdue and I just need to go ahead and get that done because for the summer so I don't have to um, do it for a while. So yeah. And I forgot to tell you, what I do is let this sit um, with this abrasive cleaner on it and let it sit overnight. After I've scrubbed it and I put a little bit more of the abrasive cleaner and I maybe scrub it once or twice more with the um, with the steel wool soap pad and just kind of, you know, scratch as much of it as I can off. And then I will let this abrasive cleaner just kind of sit on it overnight and then I will go back over it tomorrow to see if any of that would soften up so that it can be removed easier. So, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys that that's what I do with that. I, I like to put it on there, scrub them as much as I can, get as much off as I can, and then go back in with the steel wool soap pad and the abrasive cleaner and just kind of soap it around and, and just leave that on the pan overnight and just see how much of it lifts, you know. And then in the morning, the next morning, the next day that you get ready to do it, maybe some more of the what's stuck on and baked on will come off. And same thing with the top stove top. I do the same thing with the stove top now. I don't use the abrasive cleaner as much on the stove top because you don't want to scratch the enamel off of your stove top. There's nothing worse than having a scratched up to stove top it just looks awful so be careful with the abrasive cleaner you can use it with the steel wool pad the steel wool pad is is pretty abrasive too if you scrub too hard so just be really careful with the abrasive cleaners because they will scratch your enamel so you want to be very careful with that um i have gotten to where i've done i've done it so many times that i know how much pressure pressure to apply to the pad so that it doesn't 
scratch my surface. So be careful with that. Here's how it looks once I'm done with the uh, scrubbing of the stove. I use, like I said, the steel wool soap pad and I just scrubbed around uh, until some of the hard cooked on um, food came off. Um, you don't want to scrub too hard again, I said, because you don't want to scratch the surface or the enamel on your stove. Um, so you just scrub as hard as you need to to get some of the residue off. And then um, you don't want to scrub any harder than that because you don't want to, again, like I said, scratch the surface of your oven or your stove. Um, and because it, it's very unattractive when you do that. I've done it before. This is how I know. <laughs> I've done it before. And what I did, what I had to do is end up getting some some appliance paint and painting repainting the top of it and that's a nightmare so <laughs> it's just not fun for me to want to have to do that so i try and be very careful that i don't scratch the surface of the stove so um in here i didn't use any of the abrasive cleaner but if it's if it's really bad and it's cooked on really hard um you may have to like kind of wet it a little bit not a whole lot because it is electric you don't want to put too much water on it but just wet it with the towel and just kind of wipe inside to make it moist or wet inside so that you can put a little bit of the abrasive cleaner in and then scrub it with the with the steel pad steel wool pad and that will help bring off more harder you know like hard cooked on um foods that are uh baked on so you want to that's how it looks you know and it just leaves a little bit of a a um residue like soapy residue on and you just want to let that sit overnight just or at least overnight just to see what it's gonna remove and see how much of the baked on stuff that's gonna um, soften up and remove and then if it doesn't then the next day you can take you can go back through and use your use a oven cleaner and whatever you use, like if you use the oven cleaner to clean the oven, then you can use it on top as well. If, if this method doesn't work for you, then you can use that. And just go by the instructions on the back of the can of the oven cleaner as to how long you need to let it set. And then if that doesn't work, then you just go back over and do those steps again. Yeah, it's kind of the same way. It's not in good shape. If you can see, I mean, you know, I cleaned this oven right around Thanksgiving time um, for Thanksgiving and, and this is what it looks like now and a lot of this stuff is just stuff that wouldn't come off the first time you know I just cleaned it you know um, the surface of it and it just never really came as clean as I wanted it to it's just I think that I mean you know it's getting to where it's it needs to be replaced I think um, I'm gonna try and clean it I'm gonna clean it again you know, I can only get so much off, so it's not going to be really worth a video for you guys because it's going to be, you know, it's not going to come as clean as I would like. So what I'll do is go ahead and clean the oven and then show you guys afterward how it came out.
Okay, the instructions on the oven cleaner say to preheat the oven to 200. So I'm gonna put it on 200 and let it preheat up to 200. And then after you heat it to 200, you turn it off. I'm sorry, you guys can't see that. All right. Preheating the oven to 200. And once it's preheated, then you turn it off and then you spray it with the oven cleaner and the door came pretty clean with just the abrasive cleaner um so hopefully after i do the this right here this little thing that goes around this it needs to be replaced it, it's if, if i replaced it it would look much cleaner that thing is had it it's just dirty and beyond um clean so uh, and it's just, all of this stuff is this way when I moved here. And I've just been trying to, you know, keep it up as as, as much as I can. Um, so yeah, it's, it's preheating. I'm going to close the oven door so that it can heat up to 200. And it'll beep to let me know that it's done that. And once it does, then I'll spray it with the oven cleaner. Okay, I just got a beep, so I'm gonna turn the oven off. Stop, and and now I'm supposed to spray from the top to the bottom. And it recommends that you use uh, gloves to, to handle. It recommends to use gloves to handle the uh, the oven cleaner. So I'm gonna do that. on my gloves, kitchen gloves that I had under the cabinet. So I'm just, just for cleaning like really tough, tough stuff. I always keep gloves for that. So I have my gloves and here's my oven cleaner. I'm just gonna shake it up. I'm not sure it doesn't really say shake before using, I don't think. I didn't read that anyway, but I'm gonna I just usually shake everything. Well, yeah, it says right here, shake well. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? It says shake well, point arrow towards dot. Towards the dot, it's not even pointed. Okay, and I use this, um, this is oven cleaner that I've had under the cabinet. And I just, I used it the last time I cleaned the oven and it's still pretty full, so I didn't go out and buy more because I had almost a full can. So shaking, shake, do a test spray to make sure it's spraying since it's been under the cabinet for a bit. And it said it recommends to start spray from the top, then the sides, then the bottom. So that's what I'll do. something I never knew is whether you should spray the coil or not. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't say not to, so I'm just going to spray the top. Really good. This is very spray. I mean, you know, it has a fumes. I don't like fumes. Of any kind. Okay. <coughs> I spray that really good. Um, hoping that that will work and um, get a lot of that. Marked on stuff off, hopefully. 
And so now I'm gonna raise this. Go ahead and I'm gonna just clean. I can't stand the fumes of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean. Try to clean it um, under here with just Just abrasive cleaner. I'm not gonna use that. that um, I don't want anything, I don't like anything that has fumes that comes from it. But those, I, they can't be healthy for you. Can't be he healthy to have those kind of fumes to inhale them. So you know, try to make sure you don't inhale fumes from any products or cleaning products or anything like that. So what I'll do under here is just scrub it, scrape and scratch it. It doesn't matter because I don't think that you can scratch this. So you can, the only thing that you can scratch is your enamel on your on your 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 cooktop. So be careful doing that. But when you're under here, I don't think it matters as much. You're just trying to get off any mm -hmm. burnt on, caked on food. But, you know, all of this is. And by the way, this um, this video is going to be mm -hmm. a part of the top to bottom clean uh, series that I have in my playlist. So <laughs> if you want to um, look at other videos that are affiliated with the top to bottom cleaning. And just go to the playlist, talk about um, to, um, spring cleaning 2000, I mean, 2020. That's spring cleaning 2020. Uh, that's the playlist you'll want to look for, and you'll find all of the uh, videos that are top to bottom cleaning 2020 series. So. Okay, so that, I will let sit. Looks a lot better already under there. I'll just let that sit and do its thing. And I'll be back. Okay, guys, this is how I've, what I've done with the under the cooktop. Um, I just scrubbed it with abrasive cleaner and a um steel wool soap pad and i'm just gonna let that set for a bit and then i'll wipe it clean uh when when the oven has when i think the oven's ready to be wiped i'll i'll do that and i'll do this at that time guys fyi um the oven cleaner says five to ten minutes so i will leave it for 10 minutes um, and just see where we're at after 10 minutes Okay guys, it's been 10 minutes. Um, gonna go in and just see how soft and how much of the gunk it took off. Um, wow, it's coming off pretty good. Let me do the, um, you know, I scrubbed, kind of scrubbed this uh, door beforehand, but this is really coming off.
much better. Now I'm gonna wipe it clean so you can see how much came off. I'll give you guys a close up, this will be. true not every day but you can see how clean that got I'll, I'll work at it weekly or bi-weekly okay so now I'm gonna try and see what's going on on, on the inside of the oven
Okay, here's the finished clean oven. Looks spectacular compared to what it was. Um, I'll keep, I think what I'm gonna have to do is probably do the oven cleaner one more time. Uh, but this is really clean considering. And the door also clean. And also the under the stove top got pretty clean. So I'm proud of the job I've done. Um, man, it was a job. It was a lot of scrubbing involved. <laughs> so, to get it this clean. So, I'll just keep using the other cleaner and try to get it even cleaner than this. And see if it, I can keep it that way. Um, I'm pretty good about stop, you know, putting like a cookie sheet or something underneath so nothing bubbles over. But everybody else is not you know practicing that so this happens sometimes so things boil over or whatever and it just cook you know if you don't clean it right away it just gets cooked on and it makes it very hard to clean but this oven is the cleaning had me I had to pray I was praying while I was cleaning that the Lord could give me strength to get this oven clean because it was just oh god it was it was bad like i said i did a quick cleaning um in november for thanksgiving you know and it wasn't as deep as this clean is but i just wanted it to be fairly clean before i started my thanksgiving cooking so that's why i did a, a pretty you know nice clean but it wasn't a deep clean like this and that's why i'm making this part of the top to bottom cleaning because that's what I'm doing it's like top to bottom cleaning um, for me it's like the definition of it is like detailing um, that's doing the things that you don't do on a regular basis um, but cleaning them you know deep cleaning them so it's another form of deep clean or detailing um, when I say top to bottom cleaning so I'm going to clean the racks and then I'll show you the whole thing once I'm done cleaning the racks. I'm really proud. Man, it looks so good.
Hey guys, this is the finished oven. Here's the range top. Um, those drip pans came pretty clean, but um, still not as clean as I would like them. So I'm still gonna replace those as well as the um, heating coils. I'm gonna replace those as well. I just don't like things to look, you know, I just don't like the way they look. So I'll have to change those. But this is how the oven turned out. It got pretty clean. <clears throat> I think another time, another day, I'll go ahead and, and do another uh, round of the oven cleaner to go ahead and get anything that I may have missed. But that's pretty good. That's the floor of the oven. That's pretty good considering um, I hadn't cleaned it since November. Um, so, yeah, that's my clean oven. And I'm going to try and keep it that way. Um, that other, this thing right here, I want to try and replace that as well because it's just so, so grimy. It just, it won't come clean. So there's, I think that you can replace those. I'm not sure how to do it, but if I have to call somebody out to replace it, I'll do that. But yeah, that's the clean oven. And that's it for today, guys. Um, well, guys, that's all for today. And... You guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit your notification bell so that you're notified every time I post new videos. And also, like and comment so I know that you like what I'm doing. Um, you guys have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.